Welcome to my review of the KBO Breeze. This is a fully outfitted electric commuter bike that retails for $1,499 US dollars. A big old 16 amp hour battery that exceeded the advertised range for me, fully integrated front and rear lights, a rear rack with pannier rails, full metal fenders, and a water bottle holder in that perfect position for those people needing some extra minerals in their diet. And hey, look at this guy, he's commuting, he's having fun. Let's look in closer. The other parts of the bike do their job well. Please see the description for more details and specs. Unlabeled mechanical disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors, a rear mounted kickstand, Shimano Alta seven speed derailleur and with an included but not pictured metal guard, 42 tooth chain ring with aluminum chain guard, and 80 millimeter travel front suspension forks with preload and lockout and nicer than expected Panaracer 27.5 by 2.4 inch tires. The seat is plush and the handlebars are nicely laid out. Display is on the left, throttles on the right, as is the shifter. The integrated bell in the brake lever does a really good job helping you alert pedestrians and the screen is easy to reach. The paint is flat black, which looks good, but does scratch kind of easily. But this is also offered in really nice orange color. My performance results are interesting. Acceleration is quite good and quicker than many other 500 watt hub motor e-bikes. Braking is on a par, even with the not so fancy calipers, which do not have the best feel. But as you can see, they, they totally stop adequately. The hill climb was again a bit better than other 500 watt e-bikes I've tested. Look at it go. The King Center does have some delay when engaging and disengaging, but not intrusively so. Riding here in speed limit three is how I would commute, putting me around 18 miles per hour. See the graph for the different brakes for the different speed limits. The throttle really helps from taking off from a stop. The feel is adequate. The most striking thing to be on this bike is it does feel like a big bike. It's supposed to fit riders down to five foot four inches. I would find folks uh, shorter than me at five foot 10 would probably have a little bit of issue fitting on this. It's mostly the top tube length. It feels like I'm really stretched out and it's got that high bottom bracket art, high bottom bracket artifact where you have to really raise your seat position really high to get good leg extension if you like to ride that way. And so that kind of makes it hard to manage as a commuter bike for the stops. I really recommend a suspension seat post like I'm using right now, which is a FUD Buster. Um, and I have it with a Brooks saddle. So it really takes care of a little, little bit of sharp road vibrations that come through. The, these aluminum rear triangles like on this bike. The front suspension fork isn't anything fancy. It's more of a spring style with preload and lockout. Um, but it does a decent job, but a lot of your weight with the long top tube is further back on the bike. So you feel the rigidity of that frame back there. Just do a little tiny little bit of pack trail. I really wouldn't do much more than pack trails with this particular bike. But you do get nice air volume with 27.5 by 2.4 inch tires. And you've got that adequate suspension fork. Now the slowest speed limit on this particular bike is a little faster than you might want to do a lot of trails on. And then this one unfortunately is one of those bikes that does, has not, any, does not have any throttle and assist level zero, which can be a little challenging. So on trails, you're gonna sort of be stuck in this pedal, pedal a little bit, stop, pedal stop, or throttle, so. One thing this bike has for my testing so far is range and tons of it. Riding in uh, speed limit two, I got over 60 miles and, and speed limit one, almost 70 miles of range. I didn't ride 70 miles, but I rode a fair distance and recharged it and then used it to calculate my full range. Fast riders, this bike could really work out because you just got all the battery. So if you want to ride fast, you can get more range compared to some other bikes. 
That didn't make any damn sense. The handlebars feel nice and wide. You got the kind of stitched grips that aren't locking, but they are really on there. Uh, the side display, I actually really like this side display. It, you know, it's not as obtrusive, it doesn't scream e-bike quite the same way. The center mounted display is due to me and quite easy to see, I have no problems at all. This display is interesting because it does have a little instantaneous power indicator. So it kind of lets you know how much power you're currently using, kind of re real time power use, along with the five bar battery indicator and all the other standard stuff. The KVO Breeze is built as a commuter bike and it has tons of range. So man, if you're a commuter, you want to go a long ways, this is a great way to do it. It has some compromises like any budget bike will, but for all the stuff you get for your money, it's a pretty, pretty great package. So thanks a lot for watching.